and Cthulhu will exert his power over this world. <laughs> Look at this little guy. I love him. You've got to admit to me, that sound is enough to make a grown man cry. What? <laughs> The idea of a real sea monster seems a little bit irrational, even though we are people who are supposed to have faith in a god who we cannot see. We have faith in this thing we can't anyway prove, so we might as well believe in sea monsters. Hello lovely people, my name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome if you are new. If you've been around here for a while, you might just remember the cow story guy. You're not going to believe this, but literally last week, me and my friend got charged by a cow. We're all no! <laughs> if not, I've got a really fun video for you to watch next. This is Joe Kirby of Off the Curb Ministries. He is an interesting fella. Now, as a quick preface to this, I will say I don't know anything about Joe other than the videos I've watched of his, and I think part of the reason he has a large following is because he comes across as a nice guy. That being said, when a channel with 2 million subscribers shares opinions that I wholeheartedly disagree with and spreads what I believe to be misinformation, especially if it's funny, I gotta have a crack at that. Basically what I'm saying is I wish no shade to be thrown at Joe, don't go and be mean to him, sometimes his content pisses me off. I also want to throw out my new, um, I might have used this term before, but I'd like to make it official today. I'd like to call people like Joe off the Curb Ministries uh, and his peers biblical conspiracy theorists. Essentially, these are people who are kind of biblical literalists, but A, I don't believe that anyone is actually a biblical literalist because you cannot be. Different books of the Bible contradict each other. It is not possible to believe the entire Bible is literally true. To believe that the specific canon of the modern Bible is literally true is also hugely problematic in itself and belies the lack of interest those kind of people have in actually studying the Bible. And so partly because of that and sort of the number two thing, I'm only going to refer to somebody as a literalist if I hear them actually self-identifying as that. I've never heard Joe mention his opinion on the subject. However, I might use phrases like, he has a literalist approach to this story, this book, etc. But for the most part, Joe falls into this wonderful category of what I would like to call biblical conspiracy theorists. That is essentially where you go off into conspiracy theorising using biblical evidence. Joe Kirby, Biblical Conspiracy Theorist, let me know what you think about that term in the comments. If you see any problems or you have any better ideas, let me know, I want to hear. So once I saw this video called, in quotation marks, we tried to warn you, Japanese science experiment went wrong. There's something a bit pornographic about the title. <laughs> I just, I had to check this out, of course. Before we dive in, I'd love to talk to you about today's sponsor, Geology. It's January, a brand new year. As you might have already heard me complain about, I was quite ill through December whenever I'm not well, slash when it's the holiday season and time to just eat loads of chocolate and lie in bed and not look after myself very well. The first thing that falls off for me is always good skincare, hair care, stuff like that. So the new year is the perfect time to start a new routine if you're looking to upgrade your skincare routine. Geology makes it so, so easy for you. Geology has 29 prestigious awards, including Men's Health, Oprah Daily Grooming Awards. Uh, it's got 7,000, over 7,000 five-star reviews. If you're someone like me who is a little bit scatterbrained, it really is the best thing for making your skincare routine so easy. When you get your routine, you get these fabulous cards that explain not only every single ingredient, what the active ingredients are, but also exactly when and how to use them. Not only that, but your products. This is my Tone Control Morning Cream. You see these numbers, you get this really simple visual way of identifying what step in your skincare routine this is. So even if I'm completely half asleep, I pick this up, I go, oh, number three, I've done, I've cleansed my face. Okay. And then I just do it. It's so, so easy. My skin is absolutely better when I'm using my geology routine. There is no question. It's super easy. You go online, take this 30 second diagnostic quiz, tell them about your skin and your goals. Their team of dermatologists will design a skincare routine 
personalized just for you and then that gets delivered to your door. It is so simple. Click the link down below or scan the QR code. Use code EMMATHORN70 to get 70% off the skincare trial set. It's such a good discount. And on top of that, you get an additional bonus offer of up to 30% off of an add-on product when you add it to your trial. Do check out that link. Get yourself the geology trial. Get one of those New Year's resolutions ticked off straight away. Thank you so much for listening and to Geology for sponsoring this video. Here we go. We tried to warn you. Japanese science experiment went wrong. If you take this number and put it in Google Earth, you will discover what the internet believed was a sea monster called Ninjun. In October 2010, Japanese marine biologists were recording deep beneath the ocean's surface when they caught this on camera. Kind of looked like a, like a beluga whale. Was that just me? I don't know where they live in the ocean, just the shape of the, the little bit of sh blurry shape that we saw. The footage that is harder to deny. Imagine him, like, in the office being like, Gary, can I make you a cup of tea? He does, like, what he thinks is a charismatic storytelling voice for the internet, and I hate it, but he's got two million subscribers, so maybe I'm the one doing something wrong estimated just how many sea monster sightings there has been around the world. But it all kind of makes sense when you realise that one of these creatures is actually real. Now before I reveal to you who I think this creature is, first... No, 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 no. You said actually real, Joe. It can't be actually real and who you think it is. I know who he thinks it is. He thinks it's Leviathan because he's a biblical conspiracy theorist. We'll get to that when he does. It can't be your personal opinion and what it actually is. We're not off to a good start, Joe. First, let's put... The, the other thing that I don't like about, again, it's like clearly a done thing on YouTube with like storytelling. He uses so much stock footage and transitions and it's just like, it's all too much for me. Look at this thing. That's hilarious. Ninja onto the test. Who is he? And what is the proof that he actually exists? Fix your eyes on this. I love that we're talking about him like a dude. Who is he? Back in 2005, a satellite image caught this monster-like object off the Namibian coast. What? Am I stupid? What about that is monster-like? Which matches all of the descriptions of the ninja. First of all, that's not how you spelled it a minute ago. That says Ninjan. Is that the female version? Human-like features, smooth skin, walks on land. What do you mean it matches all of those? Let's go back a second. It's a blurry dot. What the fuck, Joe? Of the ninja sightings. I wonder if what? I should share this with you, but certain people believe that the Japanese... I wonder if I should share this with you, but I'm sharing it with you immediately because of course I am. Why would I even fucking say that? These powers that be are actually trying to hide something from us to avoid a public meltdown. That in fact, this ninja is not an urban legend, but a science experiment that's gone wrong. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's okay. He's articulating a conspiracy theory, a conspiracy theory that some people believe. So this isn't on Joe. Whilst some religious people believe that ninjas may even be the Goliath-like creatures that are mentioned in the book of Genesis. Why do people say that? Stock image of old book that might be a Bible. Well, their justification is partly because the name ninja literally means human, and these sea creatures are reported- In what? In what? It didn't say what language. Uh, why are we spelling it differently again? Um, Googling ninja doesn't even come up with anything. What if I do G-E-N? <laughs> Look at this little guy! I love him! I gotta turn down my microphone. I'm laughing too hard. Look at him! That's an artist's impression of Ninjin. Let's do what he did first, Ninjan. Okay, it's detected that as Zulu and translated it to Ninja. So Ninjan doesn't translate to anything. His little Google Translate thing here is, is bullshit. But if you spell it Ninjen, it does translate to human. The weird changed spelling fake spell check 
uh, Google Translate aside, the name doesn't, it doesn't, oh, it means human. Humans made up the name. They were like, oh, it's a human-like sea creature, so we'll call it human being in, in Japanese. What is that? That doesn't prove anything. They apparently have smooth skin like we have. And they also are reported to even be able to walk on dry land. Just like you and I can walk on dry land. Just like you and I. Why did he do a smug face when he talked about that? Was it like, like he's like cracked some big conspiracy? That's the picture we saw on Wikipedia that we know is an artist's interpretation. You don't need to highlight that in a fucking red circle. I could put up a picture of an artist's interpretation of Bigfoot and fucking circle him. That doesn't mean anything, Joe. My land. You might be wondering, is there a logical explanation for this supposed sea creature? I'm not wondering. I know, based on my experience of reality, that there is a logical explanation. Well, the answer is yes. Because most of the sightings have been... Okay, it's time to take bets, guys, on whether me and Joe agree on... <laughs> The definition of logical explanation. Let's see. In, ...in Antarctica, and because the Ninjan has pale, bioluminescent skin, which is said to glow in the dark ocean waters, some people say... Said by people who made that up on the internet. That's not science, Joe. ...that this creature is actually a beluga whale, or... I said it looked like a beluga whale. Now I feel smug. <laughs> Maybe it could be some semi-aquatic sloth like the ones that actually Aww. used to roam on our Earth back in the oh. period when we would have seen dinosaurs. But of yeah, course, ancient most big people sloths believe so cool. this is just the work of a clever Photoshop artist who wanted to create a bit of a stir on the internet. And you've could got to that. admit, it worked. Do you think this is the real life sea monster that I'm going to tell you about a little bit later? Okay. How can they answer, do you think? Hey guys, leave in the comments below if you think that this is the creature I'm going to tell you about in the future. Meet our next possible sea- I don't understand why he's in a forest either. We're talking about a sea monster and he's- He's in a forest. He should be like, in a swimming pool. <laughs> sea monster in real life. The blue. In 1997, <laughs> scientists accidentally discovered something whilst listening to underwater volcanic activity off the Pacific Ocean. Their advanced hydrophones recorded an alarmingly ah. loud sound, which was later named the bloop. They conducted a larger experiment where they took multiple microphones across 2,000 miles of ocean with the hopes of getting to the bottom of what is... I find that shit so fucking annoying! <laughs> Too much stock footage. It doesn't aid in the delivery. It just clogs up the screen and irritates me. The source of this low frequency echo. What they discovered was... Let's look this up then. Bloop was an ultra low frequency, high amplitude underwater sound detected by the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in 1997. By 2012, earlier speculation that the sound originated from a mini... <laughs> None of those words came out right. Earlier speculation that the sound originated from a marine animal, me out here criticizing other people's content, I can't even fucking say words, was replaced by NOAA's description of the sound as being consistent with noises generated via non-tectonic cryoseisms originating from glacial movements such as ice carving or through seabed gouging by ice. So this has been likely solved. But before I tell you their conclusion, first, I think you and I better listen to this sound, don't you? You've got to admit to me, that sound is enough to make a grown man cry. It's so- What? <laughs> Maybe you, Joe, but I- Grown men in the comments? Statistically, that's most of you. Let me know if you cried at that sound of seismic activity or ice carving. <laughs> you see somebody like sculpting ice and the second the chisel hits the ice, you're like, <laughs> grown men, enough to make a grown man cry. Well, weird, in fact, that this image started to trend all across social media. And one Mexican- That trended because that kind of stuff is cool, because it's visually interesting. And hey, hey, a conspiracy theory. The fact that people then made conspiracy theories about it does not contribute to the evidence, Joe. That's intellectually dishonest to stack up artists' imaginings of what could make this sound with 
actual evidence. YouTuber Boracio Blois created an animation that also broke the internet, where the sea monster, the Bloop, had a showdown between an even bigger sea creature called El Gran Maja. You and I know that that isn't the logical explanation for this. Oh, that YouTuber's cool animation that he made up isn't a logical explanation for a real thing that happened. I can't believe it. Bloop sound. Dr. Robert Dizak, the chief seismologist of the project, said that we have been conducting experiments for over five years now, and according to the data, it's extremely unlikely that the sound is animal in origin. But it's more likely to be an ice quake where an iceberg that would literally be the size you, of Rhode Island broke away from an Antarctic glacier. But hey now, he did not rule out the possibility entirely, and I've got to wonder. Well, he can't. Unless you can create a time machine to go back and scour the entire area to see what happened, you'll never be able to entirely rule out anything. Our next sea monster is not real whatsoever, but you'll soon see just why I included him on our list. Cthulhu is a mythical sea creature created by- Guys, I've got to tell you, Cthulhu isn't real. You're blowing my mind, Joe. Go on then, tell us about Cthulhu. By the author H.P. Lovecraft. But little did he know that he had created an unusual religion. According to his followers, Lovecraft did not write a fiction novel, but a profound truth that had been hidden for thousands of years. On the norm- Ah, uh, no, not his followers. Let's say a small, weird minority. Not just the people who followed his work and liked his stories, all assumed he was telling the truth. And most people who read those stories in weird fiction, where they were published, knew that it was fiction. Normal circumstances, I wouldn't tell you about this, but it actually ties into something I want to say later. People not only believe that Cthulhu is a real sea monster with octopus-like arms and dragon wings. It's not really a, a sea monster, doesn't feel like. Dagon's a sea monster. Cthulhu's a great old one. He's like a, a an ancient giant space monster who sleeps beneath the waves. Wings. But they also believe that Cthulhu is a god who is omniscient. That means he knows everything, even the future. Now remember this point, because I want to address it. Later. <laughs> Imagine believing in an omniscient deity. Cthulhu worshippers believe that right now he is in a deep slumber, lying dormant in an underwater city called Ryla, and they are waiting for the- That's not how you fucking spell it! The difficulty with uh, Lovecraft is that his monstrous creations are supposed to be so far removed from the human experience that the language is incomprehensible. You cannot say Cthulhu correctly, just like you cannot say Rulia, rul rul yeah. um, but it's R apostrophe L-Y-E-H, not Ryla. That sounds like fucking, I don't know, you're talking about Rylan from the X Factor. Day when the stars will align. What's going on with Joe's fucking spelling today? If he's taking the time to edit in all this bullshit stock footage, unnecessary pictures of microphones in case you forgot what a microphone is, Surely you can take the time to check how you spell fucking r <laughs> I don't know how to, sp how to say it. You're not supposed to be able to say it, it's okay. Fine in a sort of configuration, and when that happens, Cthulhu will be awakened, and this underwater city will rise from the depths, <laughs> and Cthulhu will exert his power over <laughs> this world. As I said, H.P. Lovecraft Sorry. only ever intended for Cthulhu to be seen as a fictional creature in his stories. But it only- No shit. The fiction that fiction author wrote was only intended to be seen as fiction. This is like three separate videos. What's, you're gonna have to make a real good point here linking Cthulhu to this Japanese science experiment gone wrong for me to not pan this fucking video, Joe. Only proves the point. I do like Joe's jacket. Unrelated aside. That people are willing to worship absolutely anything. But I do want to say this. Later, I am going to show you a sea creature which I do not believe. There's some kind of irony, isn't there? In a biblical conspiracy theorist talking about people are willing to believe literally anything. Joe, you're doing a whole video 
about sea monsters and and how similar they are to fictional creatures and how this fictional creature is actually real because of your belief in an anthology of ancient books. The irony just isn't penetrating the tinfoil hat. <laughs> I believe should be worshipped, but I do believe he is totally real. But first... We know, you said that at the beginning, get the fuck on with it. The test, the kraken. You We've had about six of these... I believe this is real. But first, how many but firsts can you tease us with, you bastard? You may Sorry. already know quite Sorry a for lot calling you a bastard. Kraken, but in case you didn't, let's see, oh. is there any evidence that this sea creature actually exists? No. It's no sea. Well, in 1848, the sea captain of the day Dallas claims to have encountered a sea monster which is estimated to be 60 feet long. And one mm -hmm. recent video back in 2012 stunned everyone when a giant squid was filmed underwater and people believed that it was 55 meters in length been debunked and proven to be wrong and the record still stands that the largest giant squid ever to be found was 18 meters in length yes okay thanks to joe we've covered that giant squid exist and are cool and that the kraken is a fictional creature that exists i am so enlightened send me to church right now <laughs> Over to you. Who do you think is the sea monster that I've been referring to? Well, what if I told you that... Which, that you're referring to all different things. I think the sound, the bloop sound that you heard, as you described, was debunked as seismic activity or glaciers coming apart, something like that. So that's one separate thing. The Kraken is a fictional tale probably based on octopi and squid. That's another separate thing. Cthulhu slash Dagon, because we might as well mention that Cthulhu and Dagon are often mistaken for each other, or rather Dagon is frequently mistaken for Cthulhu and Dagon's lore is applied to Cthulhu. That's fictional, made up by H.P. Lovecraft. The fact that some people thought, this is cool, let's make a cult out of it, doesn't change that. Some people thought that Star Wars was so cool, Jedi should be a religion. That doesn't mean that Star Wars is a documentary. Those are three unrelated things. And then you've got your beginning, your opening big hyped one, the Ninjan, or the Ninjan, if you're Joe. A tiny bit of blurry image on a satellite photo. And then he shared a bunch of artists' renditions of what a giant cool sea creature could look like. I don't think there is a sea creature that encompasses all four of those things because those are four fucking separate things. And you debunked some of them yourself, so how can you be... Ah, oh, he's just so frustrating. It's like he's kind of trying to work it all, so while he's not been dishonest about things being debunked or having other explanations, although he hasn't ruled out that it could have been an animal... He's still then later, once you've had enough time to forget about that, stacking it up as if it's evidence of a single sea creature. When we can write off basically all of that as evidence. I'm pissed off, man. Stupid. That there is a tiny grain of truth in all of these sea creature sightings. Oh, come on. Yeah, the tiny grain of truth is that things like weird deep sea creatures and giant squid exist. And the sea storms and shit are terrifying. For example, people think a lot of mermaid lore, sailors describing mermaids, comes from manatees. There's a hint of truth in there that doesn't mean mermaids exist. Come on, Joe. How can you say that? Well, I might be talking. I'm rewinding that. I want that clip, Joe sightings oh come on joe how can you say that well i might be totally wrong about this but i per thank you end video <laughs> personally believe that there is evidence that this sea creature exists the monster i'm i bet the evidence 
is in the Bible. Some say it's the Loch Ness Monster, whilst others believe this is a sea reptile like a plesiosaurus. Others believe that this creature is just an oversized crocodile, whilst others claim this is the fish that swallowed Jonah. And I've even heard people say that this being is the Prince of Darkness himself. Satan is a huge fish, guys. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> what am I doing with my life? This sea monster that I'm talking about well, his name is Leviathan. Oh, come on, Joe. Oh, come on, Joe. Are you really trying to tell me that you believe there is a sea fire-breathing dragon that lives beneath our oceans? Well, it is possible, is it not? When after all, 85% of our oceans have gone totally unsearched. And I yes, but only in the same sense that a fish that looks like a pink sparkly unicorn mixed with a seahorse could exist down there. This is some Leviathan of the Gaps shit. <laughs> Neither all of these hundreds of sea monster sightings over thousands of- Those aren't sightings, Joe. The those are art. Those are humans made those up using their creativity and imaginations. Some of them are cool. They don't count as evidence. I think Joe doesn't understand that art isn't evidence. There's a bit of a block here. That might explain a lot of his content. Years are true, or it's just the product of a pack of lies, old wives' tales, or some out-of-date cheese. Well, I'll let you decide. Now, I'm going to make a strong... St I decided before we even started, I'll be honest, man. ...statement, so just listen closely. Not all Christians believe that Leviathan is a literal sea monster. In fact... No shit. Not all Christians. Most Christians in 2024 don't believe that Genesis is the literal origin of humanity. Most Christians who have done a little bit of research don't believe the Exodus literally happened. Etc, etc, etc. Most Christians aren't fucking stupid and don't believe that this giant allegorical monster that is clearly ar allegorical is real. Many believe that Leviathan represents chaos, Babylon. that Leviathan is oh. God's pet, that he sort I made the stupid mistake there for, for a second of thinking Joe and I were on the same page. I thought he was going to say Babylon, because as with Babylon becoming synonymous in a lot of Bible texts with the current enemy state, the current enemy of the people, the big threat in the world, so many scholars believe Leviathan was sort of a, an allegory for Babylon. Also to be taken metaphorically, like, you know, we have these sea monsters that loom over us in life, these big problems that we find daunting and scary. That's what Leviathan represents in the Bible. That's what so That's a slightly more out there interpretation than I am familiar with, but that's plausible too. Some Christians believe, and as you know, I'm not the source of authority, I'm just a guy on the internet, and my opinion holds no more weight than yours. Except you have two million subscribers, and at the beginning of this video, despite you contradicting it yourself in places, enough throughout this you have asserted that such and such is a real thing. You don't get to have a huge platform and spread these ideas and also be like, but I'm just a guy. My opinion doesn't really mean anything. Well, you've got to accept some fucking responsibility for the subscriber count you have. I'm sorry, Joe. But whether you believe Leviathan is just a metaphor or whether you believe he is a real sea creature, no one can deny that Leviathan- I think it's most likely a metaphor for an enemy state. And I think it's weird that that wasn't one of the top things he came up with. It's no, it's the psychological serpents of evil. Leviathan obeys God. This is what God says about Leviathan. No one. Once again, I'm afraid I have to correct Joe on this. And this is not a Joe specific thing. This is a biblical conspiracy theorist thing. I'm so happy I came up with this term. I really hope you like it. This is what God says about X. What he means is, this is what this book of the Bible says about X. Now, if you believe the Bible in its existing canon, for some reason, is divinely inspired. Even if you believe it's divinely inspired, this doesn't work because it has been copied and recopied and translated enough times that surely you can understand that there's some human interference along the way. 
some intentional, some unintentional. Please read some of Bart Ehrman's books if you're interested in that kind of thing. I'm reading Forged at the moment, but Misquoting Jesus is another brilliant one. That's obviously very New Testament, but... Anyway, this is what the author of this book of the Bible, whether we know who that is or not, claims about God's word. I don't think it's right to say this is what God says about X because unless you've got a direct line to the big man himself, unless you're the Pope and you can, I still wouldn't believe it, but unless you have some right to that claim, I don't think you should be allowed to say that. That's just my opinion. This is not what God says. ...is so fierce that he would dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under heaven is mine. I do apologise if I'm repeating myself, but the reason why I personally Thanks. believe Leviathan is to be taken literally as a real sea monster is because Psalm Aww. 104 verse 25 and verse 26 is hard to explain as merely poetry or some spiritual lesson. That's why many Christians will- It's not- <laughs> maybe I am naive. <clears throat> I don't think it's that hard to explain. I think it's harder to explain if you narrow it down to only being possible as poetry or a lesson of morality. If you think of Leviathan in Psalms as an example of God's goodness, that explains it pretty well. Leviathan is an enemy of God whom he crushed and fed to his people. God's good and destroys evil. Like that, that's a very self-explanatory, <laughs> like to me that doesn't seem hard to explain as allegorical. What could this mean? Oh, clearly it means there is a real creature called Leviathan, or at least there was, and then God squished it. But then if God squished Leviathan, how can it still exist down in the deep sea? Either that's literally true and Leviathan was a thing that God crushed, and made into sushi, or it's an allegory for God's greatness and God's power. That seems pretty simple to me, Joe. We'll then say, okay, well, maybe Leviathan was just a, a sea reptile, or maybe Leviathan is just a crocodile, because the idea of a real sea monster seems a little bit irrational, even though we are people who are supposed to have faith in a God who we cannot see. That's, I'm, that's Joe outright saying faith in the God of the Christian Bible is irrational. But that's not him saying, maybe it is kind of irrational that we're supposed to have faith in this thing that we can't in any way prove. That's actually him going, we have faith in this thing we can't any way prove, so we might as well believe in sea monsters. You can't make this shit up. The other reason why I believe Leviathan is real and I actually believe he's alive today is is because of my irrational beliefs. That's what he just said. That's amazing. It's because the scripture makes a future prediction Isaiah. that one We love Isaiah. One day God will defeat the sea monster. Are you imagining this right now? Here is this twisted ancient sea serpent with sharp teeth and double-plated armor. This creature can breathe fire and is so large that no why would a sea serpent breathe fire? That's fucking dumb. No man can tame it, and no one will ever catch Leviathan. In fact, the very sight- Not in that fucking net. <laughs> ...of Leviathan is supposed to make any man who sees him quake with fear. So picture this huge, vast, mighty, powerful- Love the emotional music in the backdrop here monster in your mind and then remember as huge and as powerful as this creature is it obeys god so let me ask you a question Why well again in a different book of the bible god squishes it and it's an enemy of god so does it obey god sometimes this is why you can't take the entire bible as historical fact why do you oh little man oh little woman why do you disobey God. As a little woman, I take offence to that. Today, billions of people will breathe God's air. Today, billions of people will drink God's water. Some of those people will get dysentery and die from God's water. But you better be fucking grateful because you're not one of them. Billions of people will eat God's- What does this have to do with a sea monster? <laughs> 
food and they will not give God a second thought apart from when they use his name when they're surprised or angry. That's the only time that the Lord God enters their mind. My dear friends, people every single day ignore God. They walk all over his commands. They walk all over. So do you. There is no way, Joe, because again, the different books of the Bible, I'm done with Joe now, by the way, we've gotten away from sea monsters and into criticizing people for being rational human beings. I knocked my coffee cup, but I didn't spill it over. God is good. You should thank God for when things are good, but God has nothing to do with when things are bad. We should be grateful to God for providing the food on this planet, but if somebody dies from having some poisoned food, that's nothing to do with God. It's inherently contradictory. And like I say, the Bible contradicts itself. If you're trying to take it as a single book with a single unified message, you're going to get fucking lost. You're going to go crazy. That's why some of the most honest biblical scholars start as religious people and end otherwise. It cannot be one unified message divinely inspired. Joe does not do as Jesus preached because he does not maintain Jewish law. Now, I'm sure he can come up with plenty of scriptural evidence that he does not need to. Likewise, we can come up with plenty of scriptural evidence that he should be maintaining the law. God, Christians love the Ten Commandments. Either God changed his mind, that isn't historical fact and Joe knows it, or he cherry picks the parts of the Bible that work for him whilst criticizing people who don't share his views. And if you're curious, I know Joe doesn't keep the Ten Commandments because he has uploaded plenty of videos on the Sabbath day. It's the judgmental attitude combined with the hypocrisy that is the most frustrating about people like this. He will sit here and, over emotional music and stock footage, criticise rational people for living their lives, for existing without, say, saying grace, for thanking the human beings that do good things for them rather than a somewhere distant god who might have had something to do with it based on your beliefs. He will criticise those people till the cows come home while he hypocritically does not follow all the words of the Bible because he can't because it's contradictory. If nothing else, at least we got to see some cool sea monster art in that video. I forgot how much Joe annoyed me. Because <laughs> he does have this like nice everyman, apart from his stupid fake voice, he does have a nice everyman kind of attitude. He comes across, I think, part of it, honestly part of it, I suspect he has a similar thing as me, part of it would be having um, a global slash a majority US audience and being English. Having a normal English accent makes him sound like more of a normal everyman. He doesn't sound like Joanna Lumley and he doesn't sound like Fox News. So that makes him a bit more likeable. He also does, to his credit, say things like, I am not the authority. To his detriment, he says a lot of fucking stupid, ignorant and judgmental shit too. And so I seriously lament the fact that Off The Curb Ministries has two million subscribers. Granted, I think people like Joe aren't intentionally dishonest. I think the first person he deceived was himself and that is how he is able to be an evangelist. You can't be an evangelist without deceiving yourself, at least not if you're approaching it in this literalist slash conspiracy way, because again, you can't believe the whole Bible is literally true. It's impossible. If you study the Bible for more than five minutes, it's impossible. So I don't think he's intentionally dishonest. Sometimes I think his presentation is intentionally dishonest, and I don't like that. And I don't like that this has 400,000 views in four days. Consider, if you will, liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Because I think, as a silly little guy challenging some of these stinky, judgmental videos, I deserve maybe like a crumb of his subscriber count, like a crumb of his views. Maybe share this video to a friend you think might like it, and then I'll get like a, I'll get like a little, like a little tasty crumb of, of Joe's success. I, I kind of think I deserve it, like a little bit. Seriously, let me know your thoughts down below. Do check out some of my other videos. If you haven't seen the other video on Joe Kirby where he tells this 
insane cow story please check it out it's really funny <laughs> through this video i think i've actually nailed my joe kirby impression so that's something to celebrate do give this video a like if you want to see more stuff from me i have a behind the scenes channel emma thorn backstage where i do sort of more lifestyle -y, casual content i open my p.o box mail stuff like that and i have a gaming channel which i upload regularly to i'm playing a lovecraftian game over there right now the sinking city as well as the ps2 classic jack and daxter so if that kind of thing interests you do check out that channel maybe give it a subscribe the best way to support this channel is via the patreon so with that i'm must give a big old shout out and a thank you to my giant chickens and colossal quackers. Do check out the Patreon to see what goodies and secrets you can get over there, including uh, lifelong access to our community Discord. You can become a channel member here for some silly emotes and comment priority. Most importantly, have yourselves a very lovely week and I will see you really soon.